Okay, so here's our first example. We're going to compute the area under one loop of the sine function. It's called the sinusoid. So here it is. And as you know, it zeroes out at pi. So we're basically going from zero to pi. And what do we think this area will be approximately, just so that we know if we got it wrong? Well, this is about 3y, so it's 3 by 1 with some stuff missing. So it's not the full 3 by 1 rectangle, it's roughly 3 by 1, but so a little bit less than 3. So somewhere between 2 and 3. You guys agree with me? That's, it's always good to eyeball it this way, a great way to catch errors, and also a good habit in life to do this back of the stamp calculations just to know what planet you're on. So we're looking for a nice number between two and three. So we'll see what it is. So this area is denoted in integral terms as the integral from zero to pi of sine of x. And let me say something about aesthetics. I'll make lots of comments about aesthetics throughout the course, but Try to use as few parentheses as possible. It's a nice tradition in mathematics not to necessarily use parentheses for the sine function. It saves on writing. Sometimes it makes it easier to see the structure of the expression. So if you want to put parentheses around the x, fine. But if you don't, I actually kind of prefer that. I found that it's a little hard to teach lemma to always use parentheses just right. But we're working on that. Okay, so that's my comment number one. So this is what we're trying to evaluate. So here is the, the number that we're after. Okay, so we're not quite ready to just state the answer. We kind of have to work it out because we know two things about this area. If we think of it as a function of x, so we're looking at the area from 0 to x, which is written like this. If I were not too concerned with precision, I'd leave it like this. But we can't use the letter x twice and mean two different things. This is called the integration variable. It's just a matter of using a symbol to denote the integral. So we've got to use a different letter. So sometimes people put x prime just to make it different from x. I think that's a little cumbersome. So let's just use a totally different letter. It doesn't matter what it is. T. I just want it to be different from this x. You will see that we'll spend most time integrating without any specific limits, in which case we can use the letter x. But we have to be careful and not use the same letter to denote two different things. That actually leads to lots of problems in calculus. Sometimes calculus is unnecessarily difficult because we commit these notation crimes. And one of the most common crimes is to use the same letter to denote two different things. Okay, so we know something about this function. We know two things about this function that will help us proceed with our analysis. Number one, and most importantly, and it was the whole point of yesterday's lecture, is that the derivative of this function, because this function represents area, and its derivative is the function itself. So the derivative of this function is sine of x not of t. t is kind of a silent thing in here. It just tells you we're integrating sine and that's just a symbol. So the derivative of this function with respect to x is sine of x. And that should almost allow you to determine the function because you just have to think of a function whose derivative is sine. And this is your first encounter with integration. And you might be asking yourself, what am I supposed to do, just guess? And the answer is yes. The only way to integrate a function is to guess another function whose derivative is the function you're looking at. It's the only way to do it. Trust me. And, my, and the example that I would like to give is, if I were to ask you to divide 35 by 7, the answer is... And how do you know that, if you're totally honest with yourself? You just know, that's a good answer. What you really know is that 5 times 7 is 35. 
And so you recognize that I was really asking you a question about that multiplication when I asked you 35, 35 divided by 7, I asked? 35 divided by 7. I really asked you what times 7 is 35. That's really what I asked you. And that's what you did. So when you're doing division, you're really doing, you're really doing, I guess, pattern recognition in multiplication. So integration is nothing but pattern recognition in differentiation. So you have to imagine a function whose derivative is sine of t, and there is no other way to do integration. All integration techniques have to do with manipulating this expression into a form where you can ultimately make that recognition. And that's really the only way to do it, so, you, so embrace it. So in this case, I would argue that it's relatively easy. In some cases, it's relatively hard. In other cases, it's really hard. And then in many, many cases, it's impossible. But in all cases, we do one and the same thing, which is corral this expression into a form where we can use our powers of recognition to recognize that it's the derivative of, and that's your answer. So what is, so the derivative of what is sine? Yeah, that's the correct answer. I was hoping for the wrong answer. I was hoping somebody would say cosine. And I would say, well, not quite. Because the derivative of cosine is negative sine, and since we need to achieve sine, it has to be negative cosine. And that's another great example for how integration occurs, which is you make a guess that's close, and you realize it's not quite, and then you have to make an adjustment. And in this case, the adjustment was throwing a minus sign in front of it. So this function represents the area from 0 to x, we know that its derivative is sine, and from that we conclude that it's minus cosine. Okay, and this happens to be not quite the right answer. We'll have to make another adjustment so that it's correct, because wouldn't you agree with me that there is more than one function whose derivative is sine? Can you think of another function? And this question is especially good for those who who doesn't already know the answer. But can't you think of another function whose derivative is sine? That's right, plus a constant. That's great, that's, the most, that's actually the most general answer you could have given me. But always feel free to give me a specific answer. You could have said minus cosine of x plus five. Because you go through that exercise of taking the derivative of what you just said in your head. And minus cosine will deliver sine and plus 5, is that what I said? Plus 5 would deliver 0. The derivative of 5 is 0, so that also works. So which one do we write here? Is it plus 1, plus 2? I don't want to write plus c because that's not specific. Plus c describes the family of all possible functions whose derivative is sine. That's not what I want here. What I want here is the one that describes this area. So what else do we know about this area function from 0 to x? that would help us choose the right one out of infinitely many choices that we have. Yes, it starts at zero. It's, like it's zero. really what you're trying to say. That's correct. That's because if x is all the way over at zero, then the area we're looking at is zero, right? So of all of these possible candidates, plus one, plus two, plus 10, minus three, plus whatever, we have to choose the one that gives us 0 at x equals 0. Well, let's see. What do we have at x equals 0? What is cosine of 0? Cosine of 0 is 1. So at 0, this is minus 1. So if we want it to work, we have to add 1. Plus 1. Great. And now we have, a, we have found the function that describes the area under this graph between 0 and x. Yes. So here we have the function that describes the area under this curve between 0 and x. And we want this particular value of it. So all we have to do is plug in pi for x. You guys are with me? So it's going to be cosine of pi. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> Minus cosine of pi plus 1. Okay, all I did was plug in pi for x, 
And what is cosine of pi? So minus cosine of pi is 1. So this expression equals 2. So it's consistent with our earlier guess. And we have solved our first integration problem. 